Hey everyone, I've been busy. What's been going on around here? So yeah, I know I'm a little bit late to this party, but I saw The Amazing Digital Circus, and, controversial opinion alert, I really, really liked it. I've actually been meaning to talk more about indie animation on my channel, and while I have a few scripts in the works about some other series, seeing this pilot take the internet by storm feels like a perfect opportunity to kickstart this project. So, The Amazing Digital Circus follows a young woman who's been sucked into a video game of some kind through a headset, trapped along with other characters in this digital world that's ruled by a Tumblr sexy man version of Chattering Teeth. It was created by Gooseworks, who wrote and directed the pilot for Glitch Productions. They're an Australian animation studio that grew out of the channel SMG4. Now, admittedly, in all my time on the site, I've never been made familiar with SMG4. And I've not seen Glitch Productions' series Murder Drones, so I plan to, as part of this project. And I've not seen anything from Gooseworks either. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I don't have any kind of deep insights about the background this time around. Though a name I do recognize previously is Kevin Temmer as lead animator. When I saw his name in the credits, I thought to myself, of course those were his fingerprints. Temmer used to work for Blue Sky, and he's been on YouTube for a while now making his own animations. I've even referenced one of them in my Elemental video. And the last we're at our third act misunderstanding. I love his work, not just because of how funny he is, but also because I admire his ability to take 3D animation in such expressive directions. And honestly, the greatest asset of this pilot is its character animation. Oh my god, it feels so smooth! You can see lots of little ticks and details that make everything feel more alive, that add a lot more personality to the whole thing. Glitch Productions showed off these walk cycles, and I'm really impressed at how well you can see each character being expressed in just the way they move. That's how we know we're dealing with professionals here. And speaking of the characters, they're further brought to life by some excellent voice acting. Everyone does a fantastic job. And in fact, another name I recognize here is Alex Roshan. He's done some spectacular fan dubs. After all, you want to be a big shot! <laughs> and here, his role as Kane carries a remarkably similar energy, so it fits. We should have a brand new adventure for our new member, Pomni! I said that like five minutes ago. Hey, is that Michael Kovach? Oh, you better believe I'm talking about some projects he's in. <laughs> now, of course, let's get to the writing. And while I did find it entertaining, I do feel like the plot is kind of fractured. Having half the group go in one direction and half the group go in the other does make things feel a little disconnected. I mean, Pomni, our main character, doesn't even meet the Gloink Queen. But the thing is, I feel like this was done very purposefully. They even remark on it. Pomni's not even here? Wasn't this whole thing for her? Be quiet. If they had centered things on Pomni, it wouldn't have let other characters make as much of an appearance. I feel like that trade-off is ultimately worth it, especially for a pilot that's teasing us for seeing more of these characters in the future. That's the thing, you have to approach critiquing pilots a little bit differently. A pilot is basically a big sales pitch, with the intent of getting someone with money to finance a full production of a series. That said, on the internet things work a little bit differently nowadays, especially with Glitch Productions already being an established studio. Studio, I imagine this production was basically greenlit before the pilot even made it online. A pilot is still a sales pitch, but now it can be made directly to the audience. So the crucial question is, did it work? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it did. But did it work on me? Yeah, I want to see more of this. I'm really curious about how this is going to unfold. Now, I've seen some folks comparing this to the indie game that seemed on a childhood memory but dark and sinister trend. And to be sure, it's got that kind of DNA in it. Some people are saying it's too meta, and again, yeah, it has that kind of postmodern genre savviness to it. Because if it's a new character, we're gonna have to redo this whole theme song. I'm not doing that again. These are two trends that I'm weary and weary of myself. I totally get it. Deadpool and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. But I don't know, here they still click for me. The fact that characters are humans trapped sword art online style in this world makes it feel more natural that they're genre savvy. And it's not pushed to anywhere near close to an obnoxious degree. And while this is definitely a dark comedy, The Amazing Digital Circus never really veers outright into horror. So honestly, I don't think it can fairly be classified under the scrimbly bimbly genre anyways. Yes, the amazing digital circus draws from the cultural zeitgeist of the internet. 
That doesn't mean it can't still feel like a sincere creation from people passionate about it. I found it funny and creative. I found myself enjoying watching these characters, and I want to see more of them. Again, that's what I imagine a pilot's job is, so mission accomplished. Also, the music is good. Too good. It's been stuck in my head and I can't get it out. Gooseworks, how do I turn it off? Please help me! Anyways, I would like to do an analysis, but honestly I'm not sure if I want to do a full breakdown on something that is explicitly only one piece of a bigger story. I could try to come up with theories, but then I'd be at risk for being wrong on the internet, and God forbid that happen. So, here's what I'm going to do instead. As you can see from the title of the video, down there, I want to instead ask questions. Questions that I would be interested in seeing the full series tackle. Question 1. It's established that nobody can remember their name once they enter the space. Why can't I remember my name? Nobody can remember their name once they enter the digital circus! With that in mind, I imagine this probably means there's other things that they can't recall. Is this being done intentionally to obscure the identity of whoever is doing this? Question 2. Who are the other characters crossed out on the doors in this scene? Are they down here in the cellar along with Kofmo? Related, question 3. Is the Black Queen connected to Kinger? And really, just what is Kinger's deal? I have a feeling there's more to him than is being let on. If you remember Fiddleford McGucket from Gravity Falls, I think something similar is going on here. And I'd be interested in finding out more. Question 4. Ragatha seems really surprised that Jax has a key to someone else's room. Whoa, uh, wait, whoa, well, why? You, you, you shouldn't have keys to anyone's room. Nah, I've got keys everywhere, and you've all been fine. So, why does he have it? Where did he get it? Is there more going on with him that we don't know yet? Question five, just, what is Kane? <laughs> Because here's the thing, he doesn't really come across to me as evil. He seems like he does ultimately care about the other characters, at least on some level. Don't worry, Zubal. I'll make it something unobtrusive that you can still choose to not get involved with. He's just oblivious to how things actually unfold. Which, by the way, I greatly appreciate. It makes him stand out from other chaotic characters we've seen in the past. So, who is he? What is he? Is he truly the puppet master of this realm, or is there someone else above him? He can access almost everything except minds after all, which strikes me as odd, considering that's probably one of the first things you need to trap someone in a game. I mean, I, I don't know, I've never trapped someone in a game before, but I'm just guessing. So, I would think that he's not responsible, except... Except for this maze of endless hallways that Pomni is running through, marked with the logo C and A. C for Kane? Maybe. Maybe not. Love to see more about this, though. And, yeah, these are just questions that I have, and I hope we get a chance to explore them in future episodes. I feel like this series has a lot going for it, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Just as long as it doesn't spawn, like, you know, a crazy fandom or anything. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus Christ, come on.